Hello and welcome to the Google Analytics tutorial series. I'm Matt Landers, and in this tutorial, we're going to implement consent mode. So what is consent mode? Consent mode allows you to ask your users for permission to store information about their visit to your website or to your app. When you implement consent mode, Google tags, like the one that we put on our site early on in the series, will automatically adjust their behavior based on the choice that the user made. But how does our website know that a user has already consented? Well, there's a few options that we have. We can manually create something on our site to prompt the user to give us their permission, or there are consent management platforms that you can integrate into your site that can do all this for you. For this demo that we're gonna do, we're gonna build everything manually so you can see exactly how these processes work and what the outcome looks like on your site. Okay, before we get too much further, it's important for you to understand that many countries and regions have passed laws that require you to get consent from the user before you store information about the behavior that they make on your website. Now, these laws can vary by jurisdiction and they change over time. So you need to keep up with the regulations and understand what the requirements are for you and your business in order to comply with the laws that have been put in place. Now that we have a high level understanding of what consent mode is and why we would use it, let's dive into our demo website and look at a consent banner that I already implemented and see how it works and how you can implement it on your site. All right, let's go. All right, we're on our demo website and you'll notice something new. We have our consent mode banner at the bottom. Now it says cookie settings and we have three different settings that the user can choose. They can accept all the cookies. They can accept a selection or a reject all. Now, by default, I have it denying everything, even necessary cookies, functionality, security, everything. Uh, so we can navigate around the site and then we can go over to our analytics and we'll notice we're in our real-time report here, but nothing is coming through and nothing will come through because we've denied analytics the ability to store any information. Now, what does happen that you don't see here is that anonymous pings are sent to analytics, which can be used in behavioral modeling and that allows you to fill in the gaps of the people who accepted your cookies versus those who didn't. So you can get a better representation of what's actually happening on your website without compromising the user's privacy or security. Okay, so let's go ahead and accept all the cookies and then we'll navigate around a little bit and we'll go back over to analytics and we should see that our hits start to come through here. and there they are. So we see that we've been to the home and about page, we've got our session start, we have our users, everything is working now because we've accepted the cookies and we are good to go. All right, let's jump back over to our site and then let's dig into exactly how this is implemented and how you can get it on your site. All right, we're in Visual Studio Code and we're on our layout component, which is a component that's run on every single page of our site. And that's important because we wanna make sure that no matter what page the user lands on, maybe they got here from search, we wanna set their default consent right away. So you'll notice that this script here at the top is run before our Google Tag Manager script. That way we go ahead and preload our default consent so that when the Tag Manager script loads, it already has that set. And here is how we set our default consent. We call gtag and we set our different storage types to the value that we want. Right now, you'll notice all of these are set to denied, and I'll go through what each of these are. So we have our ad storage. This is related to Google Ads uh, and what information it's allowed to store uh, about the ad click or whatever might have happened. Uh, we also have analytic storage, so this will store things like the visit duration, the pages they viewed, et cetera. And those are the two that are used by analytics and ads. And then the rest of these could be used for like, other tags as well, or yourself for your site, like personalization storage. So that could be recommendations that you provide the user based on previous interactions. Uh, functionality storage could be the uh, language that the user speaks. You don't want them to have to select that every time they visit the site. And then security storage is anything about authorization or authentication. All right, so those are the different types and you'll see that we call consent default. If they've already selected that, we're storing their selections in local storage. And if they've already selected that, we have it in local storage already. We just reload whatever their previous selections were from local storage. 
All right, now if we go over to our consent banner here, this is our banner. You can see the HTML for it. If we scroll down to the bottom here, we have where we set the consent based on the selection that the user made. And we can call it GTAG consent update. That allows us to change the selection from the default of being denied to whatever the user has actually selected. And we'll start to get analytics uh, responding based on that selection. So before, you know, we couldn't see anything in our reports, but when they selected uh, accept, we were able to see them in our reports. All right. Now that we know how to set the consent, let's go over to Google Tag Manager and see how this shows up in uh, the, the user interface. Okay, now we're in Google Tag Manager, and I want to show you a new feature that we can use to manage the consent for all of our different tags. So I'm going to go to Admin, go to Container Settings, and then Enable Consent Overview. And what that's going to do is when we go back to our tags, we'll see this little shield here. And this will help us identify which tags have been configured for consent versus those that haven't. So if I click on it, we'll see that none of our tags have been configured yet. Uh, but since they're Google Tags, they already are aware of consent mode and, they've are, and they're already working. But this allows us to configure additional settings for consent if we want. So we can select them all, hit the little shield, and we'll see it's not set right now, our settings. But we can say no additional consent required because they already require add or analytics. And we can change that as well to require additional consent. So we can say this also requires functionality storage if we want. And you can do this for different tags, not just your Google tags. We're going to say no additional consent required. And we'll save that. And we'll close our window there. And now if we want to check to make sure that our banner is actually working on our website and that we're receiving the user's input, we can go ahead and click preview. And we'll start to use Tag Assistant to see what's happening. We'll navigate a little here go back over to our tag assistant tag and we can click over here on consent initialization and then go to the consent tab and we'll see all of our settings that were set. So since we said accept all, you'll see that all these say granted, but if we were to reject them, they would all be denied or whatever selection the user made. So this is the way that we can validate that our banner is actually working. Okay, great. I think that now you've got a good overview of what consent mode is and how to implement it. If you want to look at this code and see how you might implement it on your site, remember it's available on GitHub. You can pull it down, you can run it, you can play around with it and see how you might use that for your own use. Uh, that link is in the description of this video. And if you have any questions, you can join our Discord server, which is also in the description of this video. And hopefully uh, you're able to get this up and running on your site. If you don't want to do it manually, you can go to our help center and see how you can use a consent management platform, which there's lots of third parties that provide these, but they can make it a little easier to get this up and running on your site and manage that for you. All right. I hope that you get what you need out of this video and you're able to implement consent mode on your own sites. And, and I hope that you join me in future tutorials to learn more about Google Analytics. Until then, happy measuring. Mm -hmm.